In the prior episode of our Unplugged in Moab trip, we drove 256 miles over six hours, relocating from Diamond Fork Road near Spanish Fork, Utah, down to a boondocking campsite on Lockhart Road near the Needles or southern entrance of Canyonlands National Park. I'll put a card above to that video if you haven't seen it yet. Today, we are now going to explore Canyonlands. At the risk of being Captain Obvious, I don't get a lot of sleep on these trips. Between the sunset time lapses going into the night, then James waking us up in the middle of the night as babies do, then getting up early to catch the sunrise. Perhaps someday I'll figure out the settings on the camera to be able to capture the entire sunset through in one take, but I haven't yet been able to achieve that and usually I have to be changing settings throughout the whole sequence. The difference in light intensity between daylight and night is very significant, so I have to adjust settings within a window of time before they're out of whack. I'm not going to bore you with the actual camera settings, but I'm explaining the constraints to be clear on why the light levels in this time lapse keep jumping as I'm experimenting. I didn't make time lapses of every sunset or sunrise, but I achieved getting one at each location, which was my goal. I love how they turned out, and being able to share the time lapses with all of you makes all of the lack of sleep and effort capturing and editing the time lapses worth it. It is now 7.11 in the morning, and you can see here the battery is at 59%, and we are not getting any solar just yet. And if we look out the window, we can see the sun is just now starting to come up and looking at the temperatures we are 70 inside and 50 outside i turned on the mini split at about 5 30 in the morning claire where are you going oh okay go ahead she's gonna go out exploring first thing this morning lydia and lucy are already up there exploring right there it is now 8 23 a.m and the battery's at 53 percent and the solar is at 195. So since we have so much extra solar, we're gonna ha we are just cooking up our pancakes, and the girls already ate. And this is how high the sun is, is up today. I'll show you some drone footage of it just now. Anytime we're camped in the same location for at least two nights, it makes for a much more relaxing day in between without any efforts needed to relocate the trailer. I flew the drone and got some beautiful sunrise video of the desert scape we are camping in. This trip was a bit longer than some others we've done, and it being during the week, we took some time this morning to do some school, chores, and I joined a work call thanks to Starlink. It's a beautiful setting to be able to have a relaxing morning. We recently acquired a manual washing machine for when we're camping on extended trips, and I wanted to test it and see how much water it uses. This seemed like a great place to do that, seeing as how we have plenty of fresh water and a great place and weather to dry the clothes. Claire, what are you doing? Yeah, you're cranking the washing machine because we have a bunch of clothes in there getting washed. Thanks for your help, Clara. You're welcome. Now it's Lydia's turn. Hey kids, what are you doing? Nothing. Playing in the dirt? Or eating the dirt? Or the rocks? Yeah, I see that. Oh, thanks, Lid. It is now 1.30 p.m. and you can see the battery is at 77% and we're currently getting 16.54 watts. I also just turned on the mini split to air conditioning and so that's pulling 400 watts as it is pulling down the temperature in here. And outside it is currently 73 and inside it was up to like 87 but now it's down to 83. This is our first time doing laundry while camping. We purchased this little washing machine right here so that we could try it out. This is called the Wonder Wash, and I'll put a link in the description down below so you can see where we got it from. Uh, but it's fairly large capacity, it has this crank handle on the side and the drain on the bottom. And with a little bit of detergent in there, we were able to wash all of these clothes, and then we obviously hung them out to dry. And obviously, as well, being in the desert, things dry very readily out here, so everything is now completely dry on these clothes. So that method actually works really well. It's kind of nice because obviously when you're camping, the kids get real dirty real fast. I think that's so great, Miss Lydia. I love to play soccer too. 
Who's going to be our first encourager for Lydia? Let's see. It is now almost 3 p.m. and you can see the battery is up to 91% now and we're getting 1400 watts of solar. Uh, the mini split is still on maintaining 75 degrees so that's the 350 watts there mostly we are actually leaving right now to go on a little uh, hike adventure we're going to go over to the visitor center the the needles um canyon lands uh, visitor center which is the one on the south side uh so we've got plenty of solar right now and it is a little bit warm so we're just going to leave the ac on because we have plenty of excess power let's go check out the visitor center We've arrived at the Needles Visitor Center. Are you excited, Lydia? Yes. All right, there it is. Girls, what is this? A map thingy. It's a map thingy. And look, there's a river. Cool. What are you looking at, Clara? How about you, Lucy? What are you looking at? It's the Colorado River Flow. It's showing you all of the different types of rock formations in this area. You have, look, you have mushrooms and graybins and formations. What does this say? Needles. Oh, yeah, we're gonna go see those. Mm -hmm. From needles. You're right. Hmm? And then arch. Arch. We're gonna see a lot of arches when we go to Arches National Park up in Moab. Do you know what this plant is, Clara? No. That is poison ivy. <laughs> <laughs> we are at the Cave Spring parking lot. You can see there's a beginning of a trail right there, and there might be another one in this parking lot. Uh, there are definitely a few other people here. We're gonna go check this out. Apparently it's just a short half mile hike. You excited, Lid? Yeah. Show me your excitement. <laughs> My head All right. How excited is James? Ready to get moving. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so they said not to touch stuff, okay? Here's the old ruins for uh, the old cowboys that used to be here. Look through the fence, Lucy. They used to live in here. Would you like to live in this cave? No. Oh, look. Look at the Yeah, you can go there. What the? Sorry, get out of the sand. My head is bleeding. You want to drink some of that, Lucy? Somebody drew these red markings a long time ago. Expecting, but not that. Can I go up? <laughs> it won't fall over. It has to. Well, I know you guys be careful. I'm not worried about the ladder. The ladder is like <laughs> real sturdy. Just don't fall. Uh, just go right over the top. Onto it? Oh, yeah, straight. Right over the top of it. <laughs> oh, only that part of this is a crack. Hold on, it's fun. You should have done it. Yeah. Wow, this spider's real nifty. Mom, I was the one who spotted the full crack. Good work, Clara. I was the one who spotted it. Because you're so good at ice spy, huh? Can you help? You should be able to look ahead and see the next one. Like an onward when it has those trails and if we Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wow, these parents are really close together. Okay, where's the next one? 
This was a 0.6 mile hike, which makes it doable for most people and our kids loved it. There was a lot of grand desert scenery to see and a variety of sagebrush and sand trails versus rock and even two metal ladders, which were unusual in my experience. The old cowboy relics were nearest the parking lot and you could go see that without hardly even hiking at all. We're now at another kid-friendly hike called Pothole Point. This is some information about it. 0.6 miles, I had maybe 45 minutes. We'll see. The view here is just so spectacular. Beautiful. And that type of view is all across here. James, hey, hey, look. Hi. Is that a great view? Yeah. Oh, he's loving it. <laughs> Sarah has a disguise that makes her turn into like a rock. <laughs> hey baby. Hi, do you like the view? Yeah? Do you love it? Canyonlands does not disappoint. This place is gorgeous. What did you find, girls? Hmm. Oh, I see. I see lots of tadpoles out there. They're gonna be real bummed if it doesn't rain for a while. Girls, which hike do you like better? This one or the one we just did? You like both? I think the view here at Pothole Point is epic. It's really awesome. We had a fun time on the Pothole Point trail and by the time we finished exploring it, everyone was ready to head back to the trailer for dinner and additional exploration around our campsite. So we loaded into the truck and did just that. And being in a hurry to capture the time-lapse video of the sunset, I totally forgot about my Insta360 camera still recording on the back of the truck until the battery died. Oops. Here's some neighbors, and you can see there are quite a few potential camping spots in this area. We have some new neighbors that weren't there the first night, right there. And if we had a group of people, then we could definitely fit more camping in this immediate vicinity. And the, having this whole alcove behind us available is of course really nice. And there's actually a fire pit right there so I'm guessing some tent campers have probably camped there in the past. Oh and there's a green van way up there. That's a pretty sweet spot. Girls, what do you think of this campsite? Oh, I like it but I do like this place. That's the lovely parkway over there we would still get some sun. What did you girls find? Everybody stay there, I'm gonna take a picture. We're back to the trailer. I forgot to do an update right when we got back. The battery was at 100% even though the AC had been on all afternoon, but now it's down to 94% because uh, we were cooking dinner. Um, and uh, solar is almost down to nothing. We're at eight watts and then uh, we've got 94 watts of consumption right now. We're gonna go on a quick little family adventure in our camping area. <laughs> Clara just hit her leg on a rock apparently. And we're gonna go up there. So let's go explore it together. Our trailer is right down there, and we're exploring the area that is immediately adjacent to our trailer. Here is the view at the top, just above our trailer. Look at the sunset. Wow. What an amazing place to camp, and it's free too. That's where we just were over there. And now, climbing over here, look, the truck is down below. This is all just above where we're camped. It is now 10.16 p.m. and the battery is down to 81%. This is the Victron monitoring portal for that day of the trip. And this blue line is the state of charge of the battery bank. The red columns is the energy consumption and the orange columns is the energy production from the solar panels. So we began that day at midnight at 76% on the battery and then that percentage declined slowly throughout the night as there were loads on the battery. And then here at um, about five in the morning is when the, I turned on the mini split it looks like. And there was a spike here from the water heater probably. And then the mini split had a higher energy consumption of around 500 watts. And then that slowly declined a little bit as the trailer warmed up. 
and it warmed up outside as well. And then here was a spike from making breakfast and then the solar production took over and we bottomed out at 47% on the battery and then it climbed from there and then it fully charged by 2 p.m. and then stayed fully charged for a couple of hours before it started to then come down. We cooked dinner, there's a little bit of a spike here and then the energy consumption was pretty low for the rest of the evening and then there was a one last spike here at the end of the day which was probably the water heater as well and we ended the battery at 74 percent and we began the day at 76 percent so there was uh, from beginning to end only a two percent difference there uh, and we missed out on some energy production because the battery filled up and you can see down here that the consumption was 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours for the whole day and the solar production was 10.3 kilowatt hours and that could have been more if the battery had not filled up. But you can see there was energy consumption for the entire day. We left the inverters on all day and left the mini split on as well. So we pretty much used as much energy as we could have. If we had been in the trailer, it maybe would have been a little bit more consumption, but not much more. And so the solar was completely uh, supplying everything that we needed and more that day. And I suspect some of you might be wondering why I'm shooting time lapses with manual settings when I have three other cameras that will shoot a time lapse and automatically make a video out of it. Well, the difference is light sensitivity and quality. I do use my other cameras for time lapses during the day, but at night, no other camera I have competes with the Sony a6600 for the nighttime pictures where it can practically see in the dark. The camera combined with an f1.4 lens makes the night time lapses possible, and I'm not kidding either about seeing in the dark. You can see more in these time lapse videos than I can see with my own eyes while I'm standing there next to the camera. It's quite remarkable how much light a camera can capture given enough light sensitivity and time. Someday, maybe I'll put down some big boy money for a full frame sensor camera, which would be awesome to have for this type of photography. But alas, I don't have unlimited money and I can't prioritize a full frame sensor camera yet. Many people mistakenly think the flashes of light across the sky are shooting stars. Nope, they're just airplanes. Shooting stars would happen too quickly to be visible in a time lapse, but I have seen them in a single picture from a time lapse sequence before. In our next video, after a leisurely morning hanging out in this awesome campsite for just a couple more hours, we pack up and relocate to the Moab area. Along the way, we stop to explore Wilson Arch, then stop at the Maverick to dump and top off tanks before searching for our next campsite. Subscribe to get automatically notified when our next video publishes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.